today for our webinar about MSc Environmental Management at Glasgow Caledonian University. We're joined today by Charlie Russell, Associate Dean International, who's going to give us an overview of GCU. Um, George Lumakis, Programme Leader for MSc Environmental Management, who will go into more detail about the programme and learning experience. We'll also have a message from, for you from one of our recent graduates. She can't join us this morning as she's already secured a full-time role, but I'm delighted she can share her experience with us. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat box on, on screen. So without any further ado, I'll hand you over to Charlie. Thanks very much, Jenny. So welcome to um, this presentation, um, say I'm, I'm Charlie Russell, the Associate Dean International um, for for the school. Hi, George. And, Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm going to introduce really sort of generally the school, and um, and a bit about Glasgow. So we call Glasgow our dear green place. And um, maybe George, if you could go and mute for a moment, that would be that would be great. Thanks. Um, so it, Glasgow is. Um, you know, it used to be a very, very industrialized city. It's fa famous for many, uh, many things, but our river, the River Clyde, uh, was once famous for shipbuilding, but now it's really been really regenerated. And we have, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of thriving retail and um, cultural place in Scotland. So it's a uh, it, building here you can see is the, the city chambers and um, there's a lot centered around um, the River Clyde. So it's a big entertainment uh, place, lots of concerts and different things coming. So it's it's um, Glasgow is a, a great place to come and study. It's a very lively. Lots of students here. We have three universities and other colleges. So um, it's a it's a very vibrant, lively city. This is the university campus, G Glasgow Caledonian University campus. We're a um, modern campus based right in the city center uh, of Glasgow, very close to the transport links. So just right across from the bus station, but very close to uh, one of the main railway stations in Glasgow. Um, so it's very easy to get to, it's very connected and it's a pretty uh, accessible campus, very um, pleasant place to, to come and study. Um, so some things about us, we, we're very proud that we've been ranked the overall top performing university in Scotland this year, and we're the second top modern uh, in the UK. Um, and we've ranked 40th out of 122 universities uh, in the UK by the Guardian University. So we're proud of this um, ranking. Our students think a lot of us, and we've been assessed by um, you know external bodies that actually see us as performing well. We're also the top modern university in Scotland by research power. 72% um, of our research is considered, oops, 72% oh, of our um, research is considered world leading or internationally um, excellent. We are um, very much based on the sustainable development goals for our research, but also our teaching is strongly related to the, the 17 sustainable development goals. We have high uh, employment rates. Uh, we have over 91% of our graduates in, in employment uh, or further study. Um, so it's quite a bit above the Scottish average. Um, we ha also have a, a large international um, cohort. We have uh, international partnerships around the world as well. So, uh, and the other thing that we're really proud of is our Athena Swan Silver Award and in recognition of our commitment to gender equality at the university. So just, just to, to go through, we're the School of um, Computing, Engineering and Built Environment, and but there are other schools, including we have our, our London campus, which is um, also some of this program, Environmental Management, is delivered um, uh, from as well. So we have um, the the Department of Civil Engineering and Environmental Management. This is the one that George is going to be speaking from. This is where environmental management uh, degree is um, supported from, but obviously we have uh, uh, seven other departments. So it's a very um, busy, big school, and uh, we have a, a lot of different um, students studying with us in different degree programs. We have a lot of lab space, and obviously there's a lot of applied um, 
uh, work particularly in the in this school. So, um, you know, we've got good, some good, very good facilities on the campus and some very new labs and um, sort of general space. So a, a lot, um, a lot to see, a lot of different um, support uh, in the school. These are different programs. I'll, I'll, I'll not spend too much time on that, but obviously environmental management is, is um, in there. Okay, so uh, we're obviously supported by accrediting professional bodies, um, and that's uh, particularly important. I think um, we've got IEMA for the program that you're looking at, but it's a strong feature of our um, uh, our support, uh, our, our degree programs is that they're um, accredited by professional bodies and we, we see that as valuable and so do our students. Um, and then if we look at, well, there's a lot of research that's conducted in the school. We have currently three uh, research centers, uh, climate justice, built environment asset management and smart technologies and a lot of other research that's conducted uh, throughout the school. So there's a, a lot of our teaching is underpinned by research that's going on here at, at the university. And uh, we also have a, a large degree of student support, um, strong library, um, the academic support itself is, is I, th I consider it superb. You can really get access to your lecturers and very easily. We have a largely open door policy, so it's very easy to, to come and speak to your uh, academic um, support, but we also have um, IT support and this LDC is a learning and development center. So really any help with academic writing or Excel, or mathematical skills, anything like that, that you may need support. We also have um, strong personal support available and the university is committed to um, health and, and well-being. So we, we have a strong service related to that as well. Career development um, is, a, is obviously, we you know, we have a focus on um, you um, finding a, the career that you want uh, from this investment. So we have a, a range of services in our career office and really enhancing students' employability, you know, your personal marketing, your CV, your um, cover letters. But we have this work experience hub on campus that uh, is a sort of one-stop shop to supporting you and finding work experience and maybe different placements. And we have a number of interactive tools as well. So company directors um, psych practice your psychometric and aptitude tests, but there's also an interview simulator and, and you know, the, the sort of broader support with that. So strong service and highly recommend that you make the most of it. Um, there's campus accommodation right beside um, the main buildings. This is Caledonian Court. Uh, it's, uh, there's other uh, student accommodation nearby as well, but campus has uh, obviously got this uh, student accommodation, flats, um, so it's very easy to, to get to. But finally, obviously you've got Glasgow. It's a very sort of thriving, interesting, beautiful country to come and visit. So um, we're on the doorstep to a lot of beautiful, interesting places. And, uh, and, and it's also, there's a lot of different uh, social and cultural events that happen throughout the year. So um, you should make the most of that too. Anyway, with that, I will pass over to the, the to my colleague, Dr. George Lumicus, who's the program leader for environmental management MSc. Um, so George, over to you. Thanks, Charlie. Um, my name is George Lumakis and I'm the program leader for the MSc Environmental Management. And I'd like to spend a few minutes of your time explaining what the program is about, talking about what my role in the program is. The program leader is the academic person in charge of the successful delivery of the program. Uh, that means that I'm an academic like my colleagues. Uh, I teach in the program, but I'm also overseeing the delivery of all of the modules, making sure that everything is going well, making sure that your needs are met, making sure that you have effectively everything you need in order for you to successfully complete your studies. Uh, I don't want to say a lot about Glasgow because Charlie, I think, uh, covered most of it. But what I would say is that I came to this city 14 years ago and I fell in love with it. I, it's a lovely place to be at. I think you're making a very good choice by coming here. So uh, that might be... Oh, 
here it is perfect so um as i said before uh, we are glasgow caledonia university we have campuses on three different cities we have a campus on glasgow we have a campus on london we have a campus in new york hence the three main landmarks but your program will be based in glasgow uh, we are a very international program uh, we have a very good reputation internationally as well Currently, most of our cohort are international students, which brings a very interesting diversity. The actual teaching teams are very diverse as well. Uh, we have people coming from Greece, Poland, Scotland, Nigeria, uh, Egypt, Sri Lanka, uh, England, and pretty much everywhere across the world teaching in the program, which means that you will also get different approaches to things. Um, we are made from three schools, as Charlie said, as Charlie said before. And although we are based in the school of civil, in the school of computing engineering and building environment, and more specifically, the department of civil engineering and environmental management, you will be taught by some lecturers that might be coming from other departments as well, and they're bringing in their own expertise. Myself, for example, I'm teaching in other departments as well, and this is what the university tries to do. We try to have this diversity and this interdisciplinary approach to most of the things we are teaching. The overview of the program is, I think, very, very interesting. Uh, the idea is that we live in a, we live in a single planet, uh, and all of the environmental problems we have, all of the environmental issues we're facing, are global challenges. And it is only through a global um, approach that we will be able to solve them. Most of our graduates end up working everywhere in the world. We have current graduates working in Asia, in Africa, in Australia, in the US, and they're using the knowledge that they have gained from this program to further their careers. The current, uh, currently, our program has 220 students uh, amongst our Glasgow and London campuses. The vast majority of them are international, with most countries being represented coming from either the African or the Asian continents. We pay a lot of attention to accreditation. The program is currently accredited by SIWEM, uh, the Chartered Institution of Waste Management, and the Institute of Environmental Management and Assessment. And we're going through reaccreditation from the Chartered Institution of Building Services Engineering. Accreditation brings an extra value to your program because it means you're becoming an, a recognized professional, gives you the option to become a member of those professional bodies, and they oversee to make sure that the quality of what we deliver is up to par. Simply put, if we weren't doing our job correctly, we wouldn't be accredited. The fact that we have triple accreditation says a lot about the program. I think that our main strength is in the approach we take. Um, I, I don't want to ditch other programs. What I will say is that our program takes an approach in which we talk about science, we talk about engineering, we talk about environmental policy, and we cover everything. We try to give you a holistic approach because if you look at the environment, it is a wider problem, it is a wider issue, and we cannot solve the environmental issues only by looking at specific things. Hence, we need a bigger and more combined approach. Um, if we do have an international appeal. A lot of our roles have been very in demand in Africa, the Indian subcontinent, Middle East, Northern Africa, and so on, mainly because of increased environmental pressures. As such, there tends to be a lot of focus on the work we deliver about that. We have a lot of coursework that are focusing on certain areas and so on. To give you a very, sing a very simple indication, currently I'm in the process of marking a coursework from some of your for some, for some of your colleagues currently, whose work was, was about identifying climate change issues in specific regions in the world and trying to come up with solutions instead of simply saying, okay, here is a problem. We let the students take hold so they can investigate things that interest them from their home countries, if they want to, of course. Uh, we have had very big successes in employment. Our students end up being getting employed in consultancies, organizations, the industry, NGOs, um, many of them become academics and so on. 
we have a lot of site visits interwoven in the program, industrial site visits and to go see, look, to go see installations, go see energy installations, uh, water installations, waste management installations and so on. And we also bring a lot of industry speakers to come to speak to the program so you can see the other side as well. Academia is a very nice, interesting bubble in which we talk about things, but we need to have connections to the industry and we pride ourselves in doing that. Hence, we bring a lot of industrial partners back and speak to you. Now, when it comes to the modules that we have on offer, our program is unique in the case that you're the one that decides how the program looks. You all will have to do three core modules, two are taught modules, health, safety, environmental management, and investigative skills and professional development. Uh, by the way, there is a typo here. Both these two modules are in trimester A. Eh? And you have another core module, which will be your project, your MS dissertation. The rest are up to you to choose. You do four modules in total per trimester. And depending on your choices, you might end up with what we call a pathway. Think of it as a mini specialization. For example, if you were to take the two energy modules, the renewable energy technologies and the building energy technology, that gives you the energy pathway of your degree. You're still getting the MSc in environmental management, but it will be called MSc environmental management energy pathway. If you don't want a pathway, you don't have to choose a pathway. You can simply mix and take modules from everywhere and no module is exclusive. For example, uh, again, talking about the energy, uh, the energy pathway, if you choose renewable energy technologies, you don't have to take building energy technology. There are two separate modules, self-contained. Both of them together, they would inform very well what is happening, of course, with energy and it would help with the energy pathway. But other than that, you're not, you're not needed to take all of those. As you can see, there is a very, very wide variety of modules. Some of them are purely technical, renewable energy technologies, and uh, for example, advanced waste treatment technologies are more on the technical side. Uh, others end up being more theoretical. For example, uh, climate justice has a more theoretical framework and others are combined. A lot of them are based on software simulations. GIS has a lot of softwares as well. Some of them have practicals. And as you can see, there is a very interesting mix as to what you can do. Unfortunately, you cannot do everything. Remember, you need four modules for trimester A, four modules for trimester B, and your research project. Now, uh, depending on when you enter the program, whether you start in January or whether you start in September, the actual layout might be slightly different. Our September entry is effectively one full year. You start in trimester A, which is between September and January, and you have four modules. Then you have four more modules in trimester B, think January till May, and then you have your project over the summer. Whereas our January starts, start with the trimester B between January and uh, May. Their summer is free, and then they have trimester A, and then they do the project in trimester B next year. As such, the September entry is a program that is for 12 months, whereas the January entry is a program that is for 15 months. When it comes to academic awards available, the UK is based, uh, UK MSCs are based on a credit bearing system. Each module you pass has 15 credits and your project is worth 60 credits. If at the end you have 60 credits, you exit with a PGC, a postgraduate certificate. 120 credits gives you a PGD, a postgraduate diploma, whereas the full 180 credits, your eight modules plus your research project, gives you your MSc. Note that you have the right to exit the program at any point. If, for example, you do your trimester A and you don't want to continue anymore, you exit with your PGC, assuming you have accumulated your, uh, your credits. That might have visa repercussions, of course, because your visa might need to be curtailed if you were given a visa for the full duration, of course. This is just an indicative timetable. This is the timetable of our current trimester A to give you a sense of how things work. Typically, most modules have a three to four hour slot. So depending on your module choices, 
you might be coming on campus every day or you might only be coming on campus three days or two days and so on. So, for example, imagine a scenario of somebody choosing in this trimester the oil and gas industry, which is Tuesday morning, and environmental pollution monitoring and analysis, which is on Tuesday afternoon. And then they would be doing health and safety, which is on Friday afternoon, and then investigating skills and professional development, that is on the Wednesday. That would mean that this student has their Monday and their Wednesday and their Thursday free, depending on your choices, of course. As you can see, it's a full program. As a full-time MSc, you're required to put in full-time efforts. There is a lot of support, both from myself, other academics, and the school, but it is something that will require a lot of efforts on your part. When it comes to delivery and assessment, uh, the program is a non-campus delivery, so all modules are based on campus. Some modules might have added elements that will be online, and your assessments will be a mix. Most modules have two, two uh, assessments. They could be one coursework and one report. They could be two reports. They could be a report and a test, and so on. It, could, it is a variety of many different things. And all of these, of course, will be given in advance to you so you can choose. You will know, for example, before you choose a module, whether that module has a coursework, it has two courseworks, it has exams, and so on. So uh, I, I don't want this to be about me. I want this to be about you. So I don't want to speak more about the program. The only thing that I can say to you is that I can promise you that we'll do our best to give you the best possible experience. It is a program that has been running for many, many years. I've started leading this program two years ago, and I've been involved in teaching this program for more than six. Uh, it has always been a very successful program, a very engaging program. and. The feedback we have gotten from students has always been very positive. Uh, there are always ways that we can improve the program, and this is where we engage the students. We ask effectively the students to tell us how we can improve this. But what we're saying is that we're talking about a very successful program, a very engaging program, and a program that is focused on solving real-life problems, which I think is very, very important. And that's it for me. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to take them. Thanks very much, George. Um, we have we have got a few people watching. We haven't got any un unanswered questions at the moment. Okay. So would you mind introducing Sabrina's video? Tell us a little bit about Sabrina and then we can we can play our message that, that she has kindly sent to us. Yes, of course. Uh, Sabrina is one of our recent graduates. She was a January entry. She started the program in January 2021, if I remember correctly. Uh, she did very well on the program. She was very engaged with the program. So she was one of our class reps. A class rep is effectively a liaison between the students and the academic teams. Um, she was very engaged in the program. She chose the energy pathway and she did a very interesting project by which she evaluated how much waste heat could be produced by distilleries in Scotland and how they could be used to circulate heat in the houses around them. She's currently working as a dispatcher uh, in uh, solar energy. A dispatcher is the person who is responsible effectively for coordinating where energy goes, at what points, and so on. She's overseeing all solar installations in the UK. And uh, she has been a very valuable friend to the program because she has been giving her help during inductions and everything else like that. I, I think uh, she, has, she has gained some really interesting experience and her video will showcase some of that. Hi there, my name is Sabrina and I'm one of the graduate students from the Masters in Environmental Management at GCU. I graduated in May 2022 and I pursued the specialization in energy. I have to say the master's was a great balance between practical and theory. So they provide us with a good baseline of tools to use for environmental management, for example, for building energy management or GIS, or for example, for the calculation for solar 
um, installations. Um, I had a lot of fun when it comes to um, doing actual practical things for the real world, for the real world, you know. And we also had a lot of insight into what is the management of, for example, waste in the UK, all the legislation that applies to it. We had a visit from a council person um, that gave us a good idea of how those things are management managed at that level. So all in all, I would say it was great to have all these cornerstones for uh, environmental management. Now you will or, or will not pursue a specialization and it is good to do so. I think it is good to um, find a path of what you like because your dis your uh, dissertation could be marked by all the assignments that led up to it. And it was a great experience to see my assignments just getting slowly guided into energy. And to be fair, the topic that I chose for my dissertation was something that really uh, was mainly passionate about it. So I, I recommend that you also find that, that that makes you passionate about environmental management and you you take that as a guide throughout your masters because that is the way to make this even more important um, to you and to everyone in the world if you want for the common good um, to make it work and to make it fun and I have to say on top of everything that lectures have been amazing, they are very approachable. You have for, um, fellow students that are there to help if that's necessary. For example, I was a class rep. Um, I, I think it, it was really useful that there's someone that can, can give you advice on, you know, how to, um, how to do some admin things, for example. They cannot give you advice on how to do a test or an assignment, but they can certainly help you out when you're in trouble with any admin stuff. At the same time, the program leader was super approachable and never found an issue from the administrative point um, that could not be sorted out in hours or, you know, uh, worst case scenario days. So I, I, I am really happy with the experience. I think it, it, even though it was coming out, in my case, coming out of COVID times, it allowed us to have this really good combination of, of practical side kind of knowledge and at the same time theory. And to have a good knowledge of, of, the, the, of the legislation, the theory part has been key for me, at least for me, to pursue career in, in the UK. Uh, so I you know, I strongly recommend you pay attention to that part. And, and yes, that's, that's all I have to say. Other than, of course, the facilities are amazing. Uni is beautiful. The library is amazing. You have all the resources that you need there. And everyone's super approachable, all the admin stuff as well. So anything you always need, you can always express it out. And all the information is always available to you in all the platforms. So whatever you're choosing, just do it with passion. Um, you can always ask, and you have your classmates there for you in the same in the same road. So enjoy this beautiful, beautiful path that is this masters. And if you have any questions, my contact is in the international ambassadors list in GCU uh, website. So I'll be there for you if you need anything else. Thank you very much uh, to Sabrina for sending in that message for us. I hope everybody found that interesting and helpful. Um, George, we have one question in the, the chat box um, asking us to talk about the employment rate as an environmental manager. Uh, thanks, Zeni. Uh, typically, in the UK and in Europe, we have pretty high rates of uh, employment and same goes with everyone in the world. What I, can, what I know is that our graduates are very highly employable. Uh, almost all of the graduates that I've kept in touch with for the September cohort that finished uh, two months ago are already in relevant employment. 
it is important to say relevant employment because I don't count as employment people that started working in supermarket chains, for example. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm more interested in people that are working in the field. And from what I know, almost all of our graduates are already working or are in further education. That being said, though, as you can imagine, it depends on uh, what kind of background studies you have, if you have working experience, and so on. And also, I would note that I cannot know for people that aren't in touch with me. So I know what happens with people that I'm in touch with. I keep writing reference letters and things like that. But other than that, I cannot know. Uh, statistically speaking, what I've seen is that uh, more than 95% of our graduates end up in relevant employment up to six months after they graduate, uh, if that is more helpful. Perfect. Thank you for that, George. Um, we don't have any other questions. So I would just like to close the webinar by saying thank you to everybody for joining to view the webinar, to join in on the webinar and our presenters here today. Thank you to Sabrina for providing the message. And as George says, we have so many of our students um, who just finished in September there who are already in full time employment. And that's why Sabrina couldn't join us live today. Yeah. Um, so if anybody has any questions after this, then please do feel free to email them in to us and we can pick them up from there. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good one. Take care and looking forward to seeing you.